Well, we are here today at Goodwill. We are at a different Goodwill. We are not at our normal Goodwills. This is a new to me Goodwill. Somewhere in West Virginia. Somewhere in West Virginia. <laughs> and we're about to head in and see what we can find that we can flip for a profit. I'm not going in though. Andrew's not going in. I'm staying here and scratching lottery tickets. That's what he's decided. So um, I'm got, going to head in. I've got crosswords to play and lucky coin. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, and this one goes boom. Ooh, ooh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. So when we get back, we'll have to find out if you want anything. But we are gonna head in and find out if we can win anything that we can flip for a profit. So here we go. Well, today is a very windy day as I am recording this voiceover. So you may hear some wind and you'll probably hear a bird or two, but uh, we are at the Goodwill today, obviously, and we're about to find some treasures. So here we go. The first thing that I spotted, of course, was this, and I just thought that this was the coolest thing ever, and I know a little girl who would absolutely adore this, Juliet, obviously. Um, so it was $10, but I've seen these for sale at Target, and they're close to $100. So I did put that in my cart for Juliet. She has already had lots of fun with it. Um, she even replaced the batteries herself with a screwdriver. She was very pleased with herself. So um, I did pick that up for her. And then I spotted these little haul pieces for $2.49 a piece. I didn't see a whole lot of profit to be made in those at $2.49 a piece. And so I walked away from those. This pottery mug was nice, but it was just kind of awkward with that large handle. And these little quail birds, I have seen these before, and I just wasn't really sure about these ones. They seem to be more modern. Obviously, the large one was $4.49. The smaller ones did not have any price on them, so I was a little confused as to whether it was for the whole set or not. Obviously, I spotted the glass, but it was a hummingbird feeder. I did glance through the silver plate, but I usually don't look too closely at it. Occasionally, I will look at the coasters that are known to sometimes be silver. This looked like it could have been vintage, but the closer I looked at it, it I don't think it was as vintage as it looked. I did check these to see if they were silver and they were plated. Now I liked the design of this candle so I decided to pick it up and check it out. It was green flower coconut wax bougie. It was bougie and you guys know I learned that word from Andrew's 21 year old son Walter and I use it all the time now. This was vintage, but unfortunately it was just one little snack tray and it was missing its cup. There were some decorative plates there. Over here were the vases, and I turned this vase over because it did kind of have a Hager look to it, but there were no markings on it. There were some metal vases and I did top them to see if they were metal or plastic. Now I did notice the green vase and I will come back to that, but I also noticed this and I checked the bottom. You can see there's modern, very modern stickers and all that on the bottom. So I passed on that and I came back over. There was an art glass piece here on the top shelf and I just didn't see incredible quality in that and so I passed there was a piece of dragonware it was a souvenir I tapped on this vase to see if it was metal or not and then I came back to this now I suspect this may have been a compote and had a lid at one point in time so I left that behind this colorful little dog with a missing tail is Mexican folk art and it is an alabrique and I absolutely love it every time I find those though they always seem to be missing their tails this was carved from stone. It was marked on the bottom and 
there was something about the, the detail in her face that I just decided that I would give it a shot. There were some owls and a cobra. <laughs> he was missing his tongue, though. So that went into my cart. I checked this sugar bowl on the shelf to see if it was silver and it was a quadruple plate. And then this egg. I was wondering if it was hand painted, but I think it was an application of some sort. It was not hand painted. Plate on the bottom, I liked the gold rim, so I wanted a closer look at that. I wanted to check out the bottom plate there. I liked the shape of this teapot. I thought that it was a nice pottery teapot. It was very well made. There was residue of a sticker on the bottom, and I just wasn't sure who made this. You can see there's lots of scuffing and it could probably use a good clean. I ended up leaving this behind even though I, I liked it. I just wasn't sure about the residue there. And the sticker made me think this could be modern, but it could also be a designer teapot. I don't know. I leave the teapots to Andrew usually. Over here there was a little stack of plates. They were $3.49 for the stack. They had some peach luster and I liked the design on those. So I stuck those in my cart. They they were cute. And this leaf dish I suspected was California pottery. I did pull it out and get a closer look at the bottom and it was marked USA on the bottom. California original. There you go. <laughs> so I I think I have one of these at the shop, and now I have two. This was a rose bowl in amber for $2.49. There was some gold there on the edge. This paperweight had foil on it. There was a covered dish here, and there was a lot of crazing and discoloration on that. Finally, I noticed this plate, and I loved the hand-painted roses on it. It seemed as though they had glued some little beads or something on there, and I just wasn't really feeling that. This clearly had some age. I suspect it was probably made in Austria or Germany. And then this. This is the second time a piece like this has fooled me because it's Teleflora. I think the last time I found one at Black Rose in Hanover. And then they have a whole set of china here on the end cap and a bunch of Hess trucks. Unfortunately, these Hess trucks, which used to be a huge collector's item, Eric sells them at the flea market for five bucks a piece. Got some china. I believe those are cream soups. The set of china was really nice, but it's just a lot. The sets of china are a lot to deal with, and I usually don't feel like dealing with them unless they're something extraordinary. I liked that artwork, but not enough to take it with me. <laughs> I know it's the little bird on that picture back there, but it was a nursery, it was a nursery piece. But they still have their Christmas out at this Goodwill, which was surprising and cool at the same time. I did browse through the Christmas looking for anything vintage, but nothing really caught my eye. This was Syracuse China, and it was thick enough to possibly be restaurant wear, but with one little saucer, there's really not a whole lot I can do with that. And then I browsed through the lamps. They had a lot of lamps. 
a lot of lamps, <laughs> but none of them were really high dollar pieces. So for me, it's not worth it to buy these lamps and list them on eBay because the shipping cost would just be insane. I have bought and sold pieces similar to this in the past, but this was $7.50. I may have considered it at a dollar or two. This little box in the back had turtles on it. It was a dollar fifty. It was modern, but I liked the turtles. And then this was a felted art piece. It was a little ballerina. I thought that was adorable and obviously handmade by someone. Somehow I found my way back to the candles and I found this candle, Winter Frost. I'm not sure who DW is, but I ended up sticking that candle in my cart as well. I like having candles at the shop. We don't use them at our house because of the birds, but um, I like I like candles. These cups had Asian characters on them. Uh, I didn't know what they said and unfortunately we didn't have any saucers to go with them. There's a little rubber duck here, this New York, New York piece. And then this, this is kind of a little beveled box with pressed flowers. It was $6, which is a little bit spendy. And unfortunately there is a crack on the side, but it was made in Cape Cod. That's what the sticker said on the bottom. And I like that it is made in Cape Cod. I was, I grew up in Cape Cod for seven years, seven whole years. And um, so I, I, bought that. I also bought this because the last time I left one of these Funko Pop things behind, everyone was like, you should have bought those. And so this time I stuck it in there. However, I've looked up comps since then and it sells for like 12 bucks. So I tried. <laughs> That's what matters. Got a little picture there. I've bought and sold those before as well. Those plates had very high gold gilt around the edges, and so I wanted to check those out, but they were the Lord's Supper. And now I've decided I'm going to check the electronics. Why not? I didn't find anything really in the electronics except for this other parrot, which was clearly broken. And not as exciting as the first parrot I found. Ashton likes these little arcade games, so occasionally I'll grab those for him when I find them. But that one was missing the part on the back that holds the batteries in. That looked interesting. I don't know electronics. It was $36, but it looked to be an important speaker to someone who knows speakers. I decided to look through the cups and the glassware because I have had luck here in the past. I liked the texture on those. And I also thought this was interesting. It was $3.50. Um, it said habeas corpus. Unfortunately, you can see there is a crack there. And um, I, it was kind of an unforgivable crack. So for $3.50, even though that was a neat piece, it did look to have age. I had to leave it behind. Those had an interesting base. They were marked Italy on the bottom. And that had a fun, I love those glasses with the bubbles in the bottom. I don't know what it is that attracts me to those, but for some reason, I dig them. Now, you guys know I don't typically pick up Pier 1 for resale. On occasion, I will, but my mom is hosting Easter this year, and I decided to pick up these stemless wine glasses for Easter. I attempted to pick these up one-handed, and... I did not have the strength to do that. That's how heavy they were. <laughs> These were super, super heavy, and so I had to take them off one at a time to get a better look at this bowl, which 
appeared to be flash. You can you could see some of the flash worn off, and then I had to place them back, and it was a challenge. Now this was an interestingly textured bowl, and it's not a texture I'd seen before, so I did look it over and consider it for a moment, but I have to be selective with clear glass. I eventually came across this domed cake plate. You can't see the dome because I'm juggling with one hand. Oh, there we go. There we go. I thought it was really cute. I loved the daisies on it, and I thought it's perfect now that we're coming into spring and for Easter, and I would grab it. They had bags hanging up along the side, and unfortunately, these two horses were both damaged in the bags, which was a shame because I would have probably bought those figurines, but they had both lost their legs. In this bag, there was only one figurine, which I thought was curious, and it was this one right here, this angel with the mullet. There, were, there was no marking on the bottom of that angel. It was just marked Tuesday's Child. So I'm not sure what that is, but I thought it was curious, and the, and the expression, the facial expression, was interesting. So for $3.50, I bought the mullet angel. I thought that was pretty gross. I mean, that can't really be sanitary at all. But over here in the window, there were these two beautiful pieces of artwork. I really liked these because they were Art Nouveau in style. They were very Victorian looking and I just thought that they were very pretty. So I ended up grabbing these and sticking these into my cart for $9 a piece. And I stopped to admire this one right here. But I thought that these would make great pieces for the booth. In this little box was a little cherub angel with a harp. You can see we're back in the Christmas. There were actually two different Christmas sections, so I wanted to make sure I saw it all. I've got a little Easter mixed in there, too. This bathroom scale right here was $6, and when I brought this out to the truck, Andrew was like, what were you thinking? I was thinking this would look really cool in a vintage bathroom. That's what I was thinking. I liked it. Over here, there was a little foldy thing, and I thought, what is in this? Could it be money? Could it be coins? No, it's somebody's nail clippers. Never mind. That's gross. <laughs> there was a tripod. It was a Polaroid tripod. It was actually pretty cool, but I have enough tripods. I don't need that one. And here I found a Gettysburg, Pennsylvania souvenir creamer for 99 cents. And I stuck that in my cart to give that to Andrew. Aww. When I paused to take my thumbnail, I realized that one of these is not like the others. This right here is actually cameo glass and it is not a planter. It is a lampshade made in the style of galley glass. It's absolutely beautiful. And I guess someone thought, you know what, I'll stick this here and maybe no one will notice. Well, the crazy lamp lady noticed. <laughs> it's got butterflies on it and florals and yes, it is a lampshade. It is not a planter. That's why it's rounded on the bottom. So I took out the flowers that were stuffed inside and put them back up on the shelf for someone else to enjoy. And now I have a lampshade. And it was priced. It was priced separately from the other flowers. So I don't know if it was just meant, intended to be camouflaged or what was happening there. But then I was on a mission to find the rest of this lamp. Unfortunately, I suspect that it was either broken or someone had already purchased the lamp. But I decided to look anyway. And I thought, which one of these is it? I mean, it actually would have been very obvious. It would have matched. Unfortunately, it was not there. Before I left, I noticed this beautiful floral centerpiece, and I picked this up for my mom as well. Uh, she loves these types of things, and, you know, I thought she might like this, and if she doesn't, I would find a use for it. But she ended up loving it, and so I did pass that along to my mom, in addition to the stemless wine glasses. This looks like it could have been interesting but I don't think there was much resale value there. So on that note, 
All right, well, my total spend there was $93. Um, I think we did pretty good today. I'm really excited about that Galley shade. It's a Galley style shade. I believe it's a reproduction shade, but um, it's a nice cameo glass. It's very pretty. So on that note, I'm going to get out of here, and I will see all of you tomorrow. So long. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. In case you spotted something you just can't live without, we do post 25 to 30 new items in our eBay shop every single day and I've posted a link to that down in the description.